This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this flat style download button with uh, a long shadow using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and we'll get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is make sure this, uh, the view is set to custom and then we'll zoom in to 100%, zoom one to one. We'll open up our line and distribute menu with this button up top. And we'll open up our uh, edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right there. And from this drop down, make sure you have last selected chosen. So the first thing we're going to do is create a square. So let's come over to the squares and rectangles tool and hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a, a perfect square like that. And we're going to take this little handle up top here and bring this down to give these rounded corners like that that's pretty good and then we could finalize that just where it is by going to path object to path and we'll take the opacity of this and drop this down about in half and then we'll go back to the select tool and I'm gonna take this and just put this to the side for now we're gonna come back to that shortly so the next thing to do is create a circle so let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool and hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a circle about that big We'll go to the Select tool, we'll right click that and go to Duplicate, and hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this circle to the right, about that far away. And then we'll take this circle, we'll right click that, we'll go to Duplicate, and we'll put this one up here between those two circles. And then uh, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and pull this out to enlarge that a little bit. And then I'm going to click and drag over all three of those circles and we're going to make sure they're all evenly spaced apart by coming down to the distribute panel and clicking on this button that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. And they are now spaced out evenly. So let's click off of that to deselect everything and let's zoom in over these three circles by just pressing plus in the keyboard a few times. And you can move your page around by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And we're going to grab our Bezier pen, which is right here, or you can just press B on the keyboard to get that. And I'm going to turn on the Snap to Paths tool, which is that little green squiggly line up there. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto the bottom, the very bottom of this circle over here on the left. And then click, and then hold Control and bring this line straight across horizontally until it snaps onto the bottom of that circle. And then click, and we can let go of Control and finish this line up going through these circles and through the intersecting points as well. And then back to the starting point like that. And that's pretty good. Then we could turn off the snap to pads, we're done with that. And we go back to our select tool and click and drag over all of those objects right there and unify them all together by going to path, union. And we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And as you can see, we have a little, uh, I guess you can call it a cloud icon here. Now we're gonna create a little arrow to put inside of it. So. Uh, to do that, I'm going to come over to the uh, squares and rectangles tools again, and I'm going to create a narrow, long rectangle, maybe that much. And we're going to take this node up here and just make sure that this is down as far as it'll let you go. And that's pretty good. Then we'll go back to the select tool. I'm going to right click on that and go to duplicate. And then I'm going to click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'll hold control on the keyboard and I'm going to rotate this to the right a few steps. I'm going to go one two, three, three steps like that. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the, uh, the vertical rectangle beneath it. And we're going to align the bottom edges and then align the right sides. No, I'm sorry, align the left edges, just like that. And we click off of that to deselect. And we'll click on this, uh, this little shape right here. We right click that, go to duplicate. And we could flip that vertically by coming up here to this button that says flip selected objects horizontally, rather, I'm sorry, not vertical, horizontally, like that. And then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the vertical um, rectangle again. And for this one, we will align the right sides. So we end up with the shape like this. And now we can click and drag over all three of those little rectangles and unify them all together by going to path, union. And I'll turn that red for now. And I'm going to take this and put this within this cloud icon. And I'm just going to hold control and click and drag one of these arrows to scale this down so it fits inside of there. And I'm going to position it where I like it, right about there. And then uh, once, we ha once you have it positioned where you like it, just click and drag over both of them. 
and make sure that it's aligned on the vertical axis. So the arrow is centered within that cloud like that. Then we could take the, uh, the opacity of this and bring it all the way up. And then we can come back over to this little square over here. Let me take these and put these off to the side. I'm going to take this little square and I'm going to bring the opacity of this all the way up. And I'm going to give this a, um, a shade of green, maybe like a greenish bluish shade. Uh, maybe something like that. That's pretty good. And under the fill tab and under the HSL tab, we're going to see these three little rows right here. I'm just going to take this S column and slide that to the, to the left a little bit to just to uh, make that a little duller like that. And then I'm going to give this a linear gradient by coming over to this button that says linear gradient. Click on that. And we could press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And then I'll click on this stop right here. And I'll bring the opacity of that all the way up. And then I'll take this the, uh, the row, the letter L row, and I'll slide that over to the left a little bit to make that darker. Maybe about that much. And I'll take this stop and put it in the bottom right corner. And I'll take this stop and put this in the top left corner. Then we come back to our select tool and we could take our cloud and arrow over here and put this inside of that square. And I'm just going to hold control and shift and click and drag scale this in so it fits inside of that square. That's a pretty good size. Then let's click on that green square and then hold shift and click on the black cloud there and make sure that's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this black cloud icon and I'm going to give this a shade of, well you can make it white but uh, I decided to go with something other than white. I'm going to go with uh, maybe like an off shade of white. I'll slide that over to the right a little bit. Uh, that's a pretty good shade right there. And we could take this arrow, this red arrow, and I'm going to give this an off shade of red. Maybe that. Oh, that's pretty good like that. Okay, so uh, let me click off of that to deselect everything. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a backdrop behind this in order for uh, what we're going to do next, in order for that to work, we're going to put long shadows on this to give it that uh, that 3D flat, well, not quite 3D, but like a flat style kind of effect. So uh, let's create a rectangle and click and drag over the object to create a great big rectangle going over it. And we don't want rounded corners on this. So we'll come up to this icon that says make corners sharp and click on that. And we'll come back to the select tool and we'll send this to the bottom, lower selection to the bottom with that button right there. And we could hold shift on the keyboard and click on that green square and make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then we could hold shift and click on that green square again to deselect it. So we just have this red square selected. And I'm going to come down here to the color picker and I'm going to give that a dull shade of blue, a dull darker shade of blue. Now I'm going to go with something duller than that. Maybe this. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I'm going to give that a linear gradient as well. Click on the linear gradient key and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And we'll click on this stop over here to the right. Bring the opacity all the way up. And the L column or row, bring that to the left to darken that up a little bit. I'll take this stop, put it down here in this bottom right corner. I'll take this stop, put it up in this top left corner. And then we can come back to the select tool. And you can see what we've done here. We've created a... Uh, We've made it like there's like like there's a light source up here to the top left and it's shining down to the bottom right. See everything gets lighter and then gets darker. Same thing with this green square, it gets lighter and then darker going down and to the right. So that's how we're going to position our long shadows as well. And in order to create the long shadows, uh, I'm gonna use guides to do that. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm gonna come up here. You see these little um, these little increments up here? It's almost like a little ruler. If you, if you come up there and then you just click and drag, it pulls down a guide like that. Now let me undo that. If you come over here to the all the way to the right side and you pull down, you get this 45 degree angle guide. And that's what we're going to use to create our shadow. So I'm going to take this guide and put it up here on this, uh, on this top right edge. And I'll grab another guide, pull that down, put this on the bottom left edge. And then I'm going to grab another guide because we're going to put shadows on the cloud and on the arrow as well. So I'm going to grab another guide from up here. Uh, I'm going to put it on this part of the arrow, um, uh, on part of the uh, cloud. Uh, 
that's pretty good. And then I'll grab another guide, put it on the, uh, the right side of that arrow. And I'll grab another guide and put it on the top part of that arrow. You know what? Let me, uh, we, we could turn off the snap to guides. We could turn that off for now while we're doing this so they don't snap together when we're trying to position them. So let me do that again. And put that at the top of that arrow. Grab another one, put this uh, on the left edge of that arrow. And then finally, we can go grab one more and put it on the bottom left side of this, of that, uh, that cloud right there. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna zoom in on this just to make sure it's positioned right. You just press plus on the keyboard to zoom in. And you can see like this guide right here is a little too far in. I'm just gonna put this a little closer to the edge like that. And I'm pressing down on the mouse wheel and moving the mouse in order to do this. So uh, I'm gonna take this guide and put that at the edge right there. And then, um, I guess that's good where it is. We'll take this guide Put that on the edge of the red one. And this one is way off. I'm going to put this one up here to the to the edge there. And I'll come over here. This one as well is way off. I'm going to put this on the on the edge of the red object there. Take this one, line this one up as well. And we'll line this last one up. This one actually looks pretty good. I think I might. All right, that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. So let's click off of that to deselect everything. The first thing I'm gonna create the uh, the long shadow for is the green box. So let's turn on, let's turn the snap to guides back on and press B on the keyboard to get our Bezier pen. And we're gonna start this shape going outside of the blue box. So we're gonna start it down here on this, this line and then snap, when the cursor snaps onto that line, click and then just follow that guide up and then snap onto that point and click. And then bring this down here, snap onto that side and click. And bring this one down here outside of the blue box. Click and then back to the starting point. And we could turn that, uh, we could turn that black. We can get rid of the black outline. You can't see that there's a black outline there, but there is a black outline there. We can get rid of that by holding shift and clicking on the X. And then we can go back to the select tool we can click on this blue box, right click that, go to duplicate, and hold shift on the keyboard and click on the, um, the black shape that we just drew so we have them both selected, and go to path, intersection. And then I'm gonna lower this down beneath, lower selection one step, I'm gonna keep lowering that until it goes beneath everything like that. Then we can take the opacity and bring it down. And you can see there we have our long shadow. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through I'm going to do the same thing for this cloud and then for this arrow. So let me, um, let me, uh, I'll press B on the keyboard to get the Bezier pen. And again, I'm zooming in and out. You could use plus and minus on the keyboard. I'm just holding control and rolling up and down on the mouse wheel. That, I, that's how I like to zoom in and out. Um, I'm going to start this shape for the cloud going outside of the green box on that guide. Click, bring it up to there. Click, and bring it to there and then down, then down here, and then connect it back to the starting point. And again, we're gonna turn that black. We're gonna get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X, and go back to the select tool and lower this down one step, two steps. And then I'm gonna click on the green box, and right click that and go to duplicate, then hold shift and click on our black shape that we just drew and go to path, intersection. And we could take the opacity of that and bring that down, maybe about that much. And then finally we have our arrow. So let's do the same thing with the arrow. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'll press B on the keyboard to get back to the Bezier pen. I'm gonna start this shape going outside of the, uh, the white cloud right there, right about here. Click, snap it up to there and then click. And then we wanna bring this one down to here. And snap it onto that line and click. And then bring it up to here and then click and then bring this one straight through to this point, click, and following this guide, click, and then snap it back to the starting point, connect it all back together. And we're gonna turn that black, hold shift, click on the X to get rid of the outline. We'll go back to the select tool. I'm gonna click on this uh, white cloud right here. We'll right click that and go to duplicate, 
hold shift in the keyboard and click on the, uh, the black shape and go to path intersection. Then we'll lower that beneath the arrow, bring the opacity of that down and press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. So uh, we can click off of that to deselect everything. What we can do now is we can get rid of all these guides, um, but we're not gonna actually get rid of them. We're just gonna turn them off. We'll go to view and guides. We'll click on that we're gonna, and that'll toggle off the, um, the guide. So uh, there we have our, um, our long shadow with our download icon, icon, uh, download icon. Uh, what we could do now to enhance this a little bit is I can give these shadows gradients. So I'll click on this shadow, I'll give that a gradient, a linear gradient. Press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. I'll put the transparent end down here and I'll take this one and bring it up. I'll even hold control so it follows a 45 degree angle like the, sh like the, uh, the shape does. And we'll do the same thing with this shadow. Click on that, give that a linear gradient. Take this one, put it down here. The transparent side, it will take the colored inside, well, the full side. Hold control to go straight up at a 45 degree angle. And then finally, we'll do the same thing here. Click on that one, give that a linear gradient. Put the transparent end down here and take this end. Hold control, bring it out. And maybe I'll bring this one down a little more. I'll go back to the select tool. Click off of that to deselect. Let me just make sure I'm at 100%, yes I am. And you know what, we might even wanna make these a little darker now that we've done that so we can see it a little better. Click on that one. We do that just by bringing the opacity up. Bring that up a little bit. And that pretty that, that pretty much does it. That's how you can create um, a download icon in Inkscape with um, long shadows. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.